Wednesday, amen. I am Elder Paulette, and this is Harvesting Ministries, amen. I come to you every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and every Saturday at 8 a.m. just to be able to share whatever God has laid on my heart. Good morning, Tanya. Uh, to share whatever God has laid on my heart, just to share, to unite us in this season, amen. And this morning, I wanted to play another uh, oldie but goodie, amen, and I'm going to show you the praise dance. But I wanted to play Alabaster Box, amen, by C.C. Winans. Again, an oldie but a goodie, amen, and it talks about the oil and how the woman, you know, washed his feet, you know, with her oil and dried them with her hair, amen. And I thought that was a good way to set the tone as we are going to discuss this morning, you know, where is your oil, amen, where is your oil. So I'm going to turn the camera around and you guys enjoy and then we'll get into our word, amen. But a goodie, amen. If you don't know the cost of my oil, amen. And the alabaster box, amen. Good morning, morning, Sheena. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Harvesting Ministries. I thank y'all for tuning in. Welcome to Worthy Wednesday, for God is worthy to be praised, amen. We're gonna worship, we're gonna pray, we're gonna talk about God, amen. Is that all right? Amen. Um, I, before we get into our text this morning, I want to let you know if you have your scriptures or your Bibles, we're going to go from Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 through 29. Amen. Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 through 29. Amen. Um, so if you want to get your Bible apps or you, whatever you got together, get it ready. Get it ready. Amen. Um, and then we're going to open up in a word of prayer and we're going to get into the word. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you. For today, we thank you again for waking us up this morning and breathing breath in our lungs. We thank you, Father, for life. We thank you for the mobility even of our limbs, Father. We thank you for the peace in our minds, Father, just to be able to have our right mind, Father. We give you thanks 
And we give you praise on this morning, Father, for we find it not robbery, Father, to have a new day for us to be able to see another day, Father. So we thank you again in advance, Father. We thank you for the big and the small things. We thank you for the sustainment of us in this season. We thank you, Father, for keeping us each and every day by and by, Father, even as we don't know what tomorrow holds. We know, Father, that you are still sustaining. We know that you are still shifting things around for our good, Father. We know that you're still opening doors, Father. We know that the finances are still be able to come and pour in. You're putting food on our table, Father. Our bills are still able to be paid. Things are not shut off or, or shut out, Father, but you're still making a way out of no way. So we give you thanks and we give you praise for that on this morning, Father. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus, open our hearts and open our ears Open our minds to receive whatever you have for us on this morning. Father, give us the, the need that we need to sustain. Fill us, Father, on the inside like never before that we be able to carry it, not just throughout this week, but in this season, Father. Touch us in ways that only you know how. Heal us where we need to be healed, Father. Give us restoration where we are weak, Father. Give us peace of mind, Father, where we are troubled, Father, wherever there's even sickness in our body, I ask for healing right now in the name of Jesus, Father, for you know our needs, you know what we bring to you, Father, you know what we are standing in the need of prayer of, so we ask right now, Jesus, that you have your way, not again, not just on this morning, but for in our lives, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So this morning, y'all, we're going to talk about the oil, amen, and I wanted to um, talk about it. I know we had some questions last week. We were going through the questions and answers and, you know, people were asking about different things about freedom and about anger and things of that nature. But I really wanted to talk about the oil. I really wanted to talk to you guys this morning about, you know, what is the significance of the oil? Amen. And I did some, doing my research and my studying and I said, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Amen. So of course, the title of my sermon this morning is where is your oil amen where is your oil and i promise we're gonna break it down so if you're taking notes take notes if you need to re-watch the video i promise i'll post it you can go back but we're gonna talk about it this morning amen so uh beloved i i wanted to really <laughs> good morning yasmin god bless you i wanted to really dive into something that might seem basic um to some and, and not quite used in the church anymore but it's very you know significant to god amen and i'm coming again from exodus chapter 30 verse 22 through 29 and, and i'm actually going to just start from 22 to 25 amen and i'm reading good morning warren good to see you <laughs> i'm reading from the um, nrsv version amen and it says it's called the anointing oil and the incense and it says in verse um 22 again exodus chapter 30 verse 22 the lord spoke to moses take the finest spices of liquid myrrh 500 shekels of a sweet smelling cinnamon half as much that is 250 and 250 of an aromic cane and 500 of cassa measured by the sanctuary shekel and a hen of olive oil and you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil blend as by the perfumer, it shall be a holy anointing oil. Amen. May it God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So I want to just stop there because we're going to keep going, of course, but I want to stop there. So beloved, first, I want to give you some background as to where we are in the text. Is that all right? Amen. If you go back in Exodus 24, Moses had told the children of Israel that he had helped set free. Remember, they came across the Red Sea. They had been set free. He told them that God wanted them to partake in the blood of the covenant, amen, which required building an altar. Um, so once they, they did this, they built the altar, and once it was done, then he told Moses to come up to the mountain to be with him by himself, amen, and he stayed on the mountain for 40 days and for 40 nights, amen. Now, we all know, come on, beloved, y'all might not be Bible scholars, but y'all know the word, amen. We all went to Sunday school, tweet, tweet, praise the Lord. So <laughs> we all know what it means or what happens when God sets you aside from folks and, and the distractions, and he desires to only spend time with you and him, amen. Mm, come on, beloved, we're going to talk about it this morning. Now, now, not just any amount of time, but for 40 days 
and for 40 nights. Mm. We all know the significance of spending time with God for within that time frame, it causes a shifting. Mm, Jesus, it, you know, within that 40 days or that 40 nights, it causes a shifting or a change. And, and we're going to talk about it on this morning. Amen. If you don't believe me, go back in your text and, and refresh your memory. If you remember, remember Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and, and while he was in there, there was a shifting. Amen. Good morning, Drew. And then we had Noah. He built the ark because the earth was flooded for what? 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. If he didn't build the, the ark, he would have been flooded with everyone else. Amen. And the animals would not have survived. Amen. So there was a shifting that happened when Noah was there. And then you have the children of Israel who were stuck in the wilderness, which we're referring to with Moses for 40 years. Mm, Jesus. So, so what was God talking about with Moses on the mountain for that long? You know, what did it require for him to be up there for 40 nights and 40 years? If you look in the text in Exodus 25 through 30, I'm talking about chapters 25 and 30, and you go back to, to read, God was telling and showing Moses how he had to build the tabernacle. Mm. And, and which would be the place where the anointed priest would go to worship him and, and lift him up and, and have offerings and to spend time with God. If you never had read about the tabernacle before, I suggest that you go read it. I promise you, it is an amazing story. Take your time. Again, I go back sometimes and keep rereading it. Amen. Because I'm so interested to know, you know, how this is considered really the first church, if you want to put it in layman's terms, that was built back in the Bible days. But it was considered a tent and it was called the tabernacle. Amen. So when you get to chapter 30, which is where we are reading on this morning, beloved, and you get to verse 22. Here we read about God telling Moses that he needed to make an anointing oil. Mm. And not just telling him, but he also gave him specific details on what goes in the oil. Mm. If you thought that you, were, you weren't special, I promise you that you're truly wrong. And if you thought you weren't unique, I promise you you're wrong again. Beloved, you were created by God who took the time to ensure that every part of you was created unique and beautiful and precious and that no one could compare. Mm. Even folks who are twins have at least one thing about them that's physically not the same, amen? It's either maybe a birthmark or, or maybe the color of their eyes, amen? But something about them is different. Why? Because we are all unique in God's eyes. I, I'm trying to tell you, beloved, this morning, because God made Moses have the tabernacle and the tent and the oil, there was detail and there were certain measurements that he put in it. And we as the oil and the tabernacle are children of God. And we are unique as well. God put detail into us as he tried to make us. Amen. So, so I'm trying to get you to understand that as we, as I was doing my studying and the research, there were some things pertaining to the oil that I thought was very interesting. Amen. The first thing it is that the oil is referenced in the Bible 191 times. Mm. But when you hear olive oil, it's only mentioned seven times. And we know what seven means. Amen. Seven in the biblical name is the number of completion. Amen. So back in the Bible days, the primary purpose of the anointing oil or, or the holy anointing oil, should I say, was to sanctify or to set the appointed person or the object apart, amen, to, to make sure people knew it was holy or to make sure it, it was set apart. So so here again in, in the text, so if you go back in the chapters, you have Moses had to first, he had to build the tabernacle. That was his first thing he had to do. And I'm sure his brother, you know, Aaron and Aaron's sons and all the elders helped him out. I'm sure his homies didn't leave him hanging. When he came back down that mountain, they probably was like, you was gone for a long time. What's up? You know, he's like, we got to build this tabernacle. He probably was like, what? You know, they were like, we got to do what, Moses? Like, you've been gone for 40 days. But they did not complain. They got with him <laughs> and they built the tabernacle. And Moses couldn't just tell them how, you know, just put this tent up and do this. But he had to, you know, show them the image because they didn't see what God showed him. So he had to relate to them. You know, this is how it has to be done specifically. Good morning, Tisha. And not just the structure, but he also had to put everything inside the tabernacle 
in detail exactly how God showed him. Again, if you don't believe me, Morna Rita, go back into the text. It tells you verbatim how the tent was supposed to be structured and then how what was supposed to be on the altar and then how the lamp stamps had to have certain engraving or, or certain uh, implements on it. I'm telling you, God was real thorough, amen, when he told Moses how to do this. So Moses, it wasn't like he was just grabbing uh, this little th piece of furniture and that thing. He had to go make sure it looked exactly in the image and the detail that God had designed for him. So he made sure that everything reflected in detail what God told him. Beloved, I want you to know, or I, maybe I want to ask, amen. Have you been listening to what God has been telling you? Mm, Jesus, I, I, I wonder, remember I said Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and for 40 nights. Morning, Trinise. And he had to sit there and listen to God tell him all the details of how he wanted the tent to be done, how he wanted the tabernacle to be done. He had to sit there and listen. And it took 40 days and 40 nights while he was also making the tablets. I wonder, beloved, ha do, have you been listening to what God has been telling you? Amen. Good morning, Udowski. Ha have you seen things that only God has showed you about what he requires of you in this season? Mm. Jesus, you know, if so, are you building your tabernacle? Mm, God, do you have a, a places that are sacred or, or do you have a space to sit with God? This is what I'm wondering, beloved, you know, again, I wanted to really teach or talk about this this morning because we have to get back to, to where we came from. Amen. Or we need to go back to church of the building is closed, but, but we still have a sanctuary. We still have an area, which is our homes or our living rooms or our bedrooms, wherever you might, maybe even outdoors in the park or in your backyard. Good morning, Tanita. We still have places to go to reverence God. So I'm wondering, are you taking the time to listen to God in this season? As Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, we are kind of quarantined in for what, six months to seven months, amen? We really can't do but so much. Or as you're in there, are you listening to what God has been telling you? Have you seen or had the dreams of God showing you what he needs of you in this season? Mm, Jesus, I'm wondering, beloved, on this morning, are you building your tabernacle? Or are you getting your tent ready? Mm, Jesus, so... So if we go back to the text and, and after the tabernacle was finished, God needed Moses to make the holy anointing oil. If you look in Exodus 30, we're going to read it again. He needed you to make the holy anointing oil. He didn't say make the oil. He said the holy anointing oil. Again, let's read it again. Um, Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 through 29. It says, the Lord spoke to Moses and he said, take the finest spices of liquid and myrrh, 500 shekels and sweet smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250 and then 250 of aromic cane and 500 of cassa measured by the sanctuary shekel and a hint of olive oil. And you shall make all of these a sacred anointing oil blended as by the perfumer and it shall be a holy anointed oil. So, so Moses got detailed instruction after he built the tabernacle to make the oil. Here we see Moses' last ingredient. If you guys were reading along with me, if you see uh, in verse 24, the last ingredient that Moses had to add to make the oil was olive oil, which I've stated before was very expensive back in those days. It was a rich thing to have. And so then I started to wonder, you know, my mind be going, y'all, I'll be studying. I'll be trying to figure out, you know, what is God saying? That's why I like to go back in the text and reread it because I believe in every season I'm seeing, you know, a new understanding or I'm getting a new revelation. Amen. So I, when I started to wonder, you know, why did God have to add all those things to the olive oil? Why, why did he need all those things? Could it not have been enough by itself? You know, we use olive oil, you know, in the church when, when we are in the church or maybe in your home. I know I got olive oil, you know, in my house. And sometimes I use that to anoint things and stuff. But, you know, could the olive oil not have been enough? Maybe so. Maybe it could have. I don't say I'm not saying what we have or what we use is not enough. But for some reason in this specific text and what God was trying to do in the tabernacle, God needed Mo Moses to add some more things. So 
I was like, maybe it could have been enough, but I don't think it would have been enough or it wouldn't have been holy without the sweet fragrance of the aroma. See, in the text, he had to add spices and perfumes and just a hint of the olive oil. Promise I'm going somewhere. Stay with me, beloved. Uh, so, so why would that be? If you know anything about Christ, amen, you shall know that the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, Jesus, which is a part of the Trinity of God, is like a sweet spirit, right? We say it's like a sweet aroma that comes in the room and, and that dwells within the places of God, amen? So, so what am I saying this morning, beloved? I'm glad that you asked. I want you to see that in the text, the olive oil represented God, amen? That's why they only needed a hint of it, but, but they also said, he said, put just a hint of me in the mix. Amen. But, but the spices and the perfumes and, 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 and they had to be in big measurement and they had to be accurate for they were the representation of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, Jesus. Listen, beloved, just because you have oil doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is in it. Oh my God. There, there's some steps and, and there's some things that you have to go through. Ooh, Jesus. And there's some things you need to measure out in order to get to the holy oil. Amen. If you don't believe me, it says in second Corinthians chapter two, verse 15, for we are to God, the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Woo, Jesus, I'm telling you right now, beloved, it, it took not just the oil alone to make it holy. But God said, I need you, Moses, to put in the spices and the perfume because he needed the Holy Spirit to come on in. It had not happened for them to have the upper room experience yet. They did not know, you know, what it felt or what it meant to have the Holy Spirit. So God says, I need you to be able to make the oil and put the perfume so the Holy Spirit is there to anoint the tabernacle to make it holy. Woo, Jesus. Even as you go on in the text, if we keep going down in Exodus 30, if you look at 26 to 29, it says, when you shall anoint the tent, once Moses made the oil, he continues to tell Moses to anoint the tent and the meeting of the Ark of the Covenant. And he said, the table and all its utensils and the lampstands and its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of the burnt offerings and, and with all its utensils and the basin where it stands. And it says, you shall consecrate them so that they may mo be most holy and whatever touches them will become holy. Mm, Jesus. So, so first he said, make the oil. And I wanted you to add the Holy Spirit to the oil. And now I need you to go anoint the tabernacle that you built with you and your homeboys. Go back there and anoint it so that it can be consecrated to become holy. Now, now I, I want you to imagine for a minute, beloved, that the Moses' response that he could have been in 2020, all right? I want us to have some fun this morning, is that all right? So we want to imagine, you know, what Moses could have said to God, you know, in 2020, if he was telling him to do these things, you know, Moses might have said, like, one, he was probably like, first you had me build a tent, God, and then you had me put everything in it, right? And then, second, you had me go get all these spices, perfumes, knowing they're not cheap, knowing I can't get them from everywhere. I'm over here with these children who be murmuring and complaining as it is. They got to go find the spices. You want me to measure them a certain way. Then you got to get a little bit of olive oil and mix them all together. Now, now you want me to go back into the place that I built, come on, God, for real, like, and, and put it on the place. Listen, y'all, again, I'm just, you know, paraphrasing and just trying to say, you know, this is what Moses could have said, or maybe this is what Moses could have sound like. He would, you know, he probably be like, this tent is really big and stuff. And, you know, I don't understand why I can't just leave the oil in the tent and then maybe the place can, you know, the aroma can make it like holy. You know how we light incense? Can't we just leave it there and it'll be holy? Or or why can't I just say a prayer and, and just leave it over on the altar and then, you know, you let your thing do your thing and then now we have a, a holy place? I want you to imagine, beloved, if Moses complained like us, mm, Jesus, where do you think Moses would have been? My God. If he complained and murmured, we already know after this, the children of Israel complained and murmured. That's why they were stuck for 40 years, amen? But imagine if Moses complained and murmured like us, where do you think Moses would have been? Do you actually think there would have been a tent? I'm sure there probably wouldn't have, tweet, tweet, amen? 
But Moses did not complain. Moses did not say, you know what, this is too much. I'm not doing this, God. I know that I believe in you. I know I'm following you. I've been, you know, I got them through the Red Sea. I've been listening to you since the burning bush. But you know what? Enough is enough. He didn't do all that. Moses said, okay. Moses did whatever God asked of him. For he knew there was something bigger than himself that God needed. Who Jesus. First, I, I want you to show how God showed you how to make the holy oil, beloved. I'm trying to tell you this morning that he tells you what he needs of you, even when you think that he's not telling you. Amen. He's showing you what he desires or, desires or needs from you in this season. He's been showing you how to make the holy oil. He's been telling you where he needs you to go, or he's been trying to tell you what he needs you to stop doing. Amen. Tweet, tweet. Come on, saints. We're going to talk about it on this morning. You know, everything that you have built, my God, he, he's been about to, you know, shout to you, or he's trying to show up or, or tell you what to do. And some of you are, are not building. Some of you are not paying attention to the signs. Some of you are not understanding what God is saying. I need you to put your tent together. Or I need you to go ahead and make the oil. You are thinking it's indigestion, or you are up late at night thinking you having nightmares because you watch the scary movies. No, God says, I've been trying to get your attention. I've been trying to tell you what I need from you in this season. He's been trying to get you into a place or to build a certain area or an altar where things could be holy. Woo, Jesus. And not just any altar, but he needs it to be a holy altar. Amen. He's been trying to get you to fast. And some of you have been fasting and things are not turning around. And some of you can't sleep at night because you're, you're troubled in your mind. And my God says, well, where is your oil beloved? Ooh, Jesus, you know, you, you can't get to the mountain with God without your oil. Where is your oil in this season? Beloved, heck, can I not see today? Where is your oil? If you do not take the time to anoint yourself, ooh, Jesus, or take the time to even anoint your house. And, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the oil crosses that my mother used to do back in the day. Amen. And, and put on the walls, you know, but I'm talking about really getting into the oil. Amen. That means it, it didn't take just the cross, but she had to get into worship. She had to actually say, thank you, Father, as she's putting the cross on the doorknob. She's saying, thank you, Father, as you're putting it on the bathroom sink. She's going to the, the doorpost outside our house and putting on uh, the oil cross and saying, Lord, I serve you. Lord, I live for you. There's something about the oil. You have to get your house together, beloved, and cover where you are. We have been quarantined for six to seven months. It's not by coincidence that it's still going. So if you are quarantined in your home, is your home anointed? Is it covered with the oil? Mm, Jesus, the oil in you sometimes is not enough if you don't have the overflow covering on the walls or, or the overflow is not in your bedroom. People should be able to come in your home and feel the oil. They should be able to come and feel the energy to be different. Whatever burdens or whatever enemy or whatever thing was heavy on them, they should be able to come in and have have it leave and feel some different way. Why? Because your house is anointed. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. You can go ahead and give God praise for that. Jesus wants you to anoint not just your house, but go ahead and anoint your children too. They might be acting crazy or not acting crazy. Amen. You have to anoint everything that's in it. Remember Moses, he told him to go to the tabernacle in the tent and not just to anoint the tent, but everything of furniture or every piece that was in it because he needed it to be consecrated so it can be holy. You have been praying or maybe fasting in your secret time, but you are forgetting about the children or you're forgetting about your spouse or you're forgetting about those who are in connection with you that's in the house with you. Go lay hands on them too. Amen. Go ahead and get them to pray with you as well. Amen. Come on, do a Bible study with your family, just you and, and the kids or whoever. You don't have to wait on, on the live stream. You don't got to wait for the church to get on the Facebook or the YouTube. You can go ahead and have church all by yourself. Amen. Sometimes you got to get into the atmosphere of anointing, not just yourself, but those that are connected to you and in the space that you're in. Amen. I know that's right. Hallelujah. You got to anoint the whole thing. That's what the oil was. And, and the reason he told Moses to anoint the tent and the tabernacle was because of verse 29. He said, you shall consecrate them all so that they may be most holy. 
and whatever touches them shall become holy. So it wasn't about him just building the tent and the tabernacle so they could have somewhere to go and pray. But he was like, no, 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 no. I need you to make it holy. And the only way you can do that is, is to put together the, the spices and the perfumes and a hint of me. So I need the Holy Spirit and some of me and I need a nice mixture in there with the aroma and then I need it to touch everything because I need the whole consecration of the ground to be holy. Remember, if something is holy and it has been consecrated in the oil of the Lord. Woo, Jesus. That means that no demon nor no so devil can be able to come in. Can nothing distract you? Can nothing take you out of this world? Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, beloved. Can nothing be fight you in your sleep when you anoint your bedroom? Can nothing try to attack your family when your house is anointed? Come on. There has to be a consecration that has to come in. I wanted to go there because we are going back to the old days. We're going back to the times when the church is closed and we can't get to the building to be able to consecrate ourselves. So we need to consecrate where we are. Consecrate your living room and your bedroom. Consecrate your bathroom and your kitchen, your car, your doorpost, whatever things that you might be in, wherever you might touch. God says, I need you to consecrate it in this season. I need you to make it holy so that way the demons and the distractions and the devils that are trying to come in or have been trying to fight you or battle you will not be able to sustain because you have anointed what needs to be holy. Woo, Jesus. Come on, give God praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Devils have been fighting you in your sleep because your bedroom might not be holy. Come on, anoint the bedroom. And I'm not just talking about above the wall of the bedroom, but I'm talking about each wall and, and the bed. And I'm talking about the drawers and the TV, whatever's in your room. Amen. Anoint it. You know, some of you have been stuck in the house with your partner. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and you love them to death, but y'all about to kill each other. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> Amen. And y'all, y'all going crazy. The kids are driving you crazy. That's because your house is not anointed. Your house is not holy, beloved. It's time to get your oil. It's time to anoint your house. You know, cover those things that God has blessed you with. Even in the pandemic, you are still being blessed. Bless your refrigerator. Put the oil on the refrigerator and say, thank you, God, for the food. Put the oil on the light bulb and say, thank you for the electricity that did not get cut off on this season or in this month. Come on, you got to thank God for the small things. Amen. Saturate the atmosphere with that sweet smelling aromas. Get your sage or your incense. Get your candles. Come on and, and set the stage. Get your own tent. I'm telling you, make your own tabernacle and watch God shift things around. We said in the beginning, Moses had to go up there for 40 days and 40 nights because there was a shifting that God needed to happen within him so that way he can go deliver what God needed to tell him in detail and private. You can't get to the shifting or the change if you're not taking the time to saturate your atmosphere. If you're not taking the time to get into place with God. Amen. Good morning, Aunt Sandy. If you're not taking the time to saturate and to sustain your environment, how in the world are you expecting a shift in this season? You cannot expect to come out of this pandemic the same way that you came in. How can I not see today? If you need a, a newness or you're looking for a new revelation or, or, or you're desiring an uplifting with God, you got to take the time to what? Saturate your environment. Take the time to get into alignment with God. Take the time to sit still and really hear from God. We've talked about it before. Know God's voice beyond what your voice is telling you. Amen. Know, know God's discernment and, and feel the spirit of the Holy Spirit before you feel your own spirit. Amen. Get up out of those things or up around from those folks who don't need to be around you or, or, or in those situations you don't need anymore. There's no more excuses. Amen. Good morning, Karen. There, there's no more excuses. You can't say, you know, I've been trying Jesus for so long, but I don't know what to do. And, and, and they keep tempting me. There's no more excuse. It's a pandemic. Things are shut down. You want to keep going back to that thing. Amen. And God say, not in this season. I need you to be more mindful. I need you to have more wisdom. Amen. Spend more time with me in your secret space. 
Because when you spend time, I promise you, I am a witness. And I know I got some saints on here who's a witness this morning. When you spend time in your secret place with God, watch how he will pour out a fresh anointing on you. Ooh, Jesus, watch how he will give you a new veil. Watch how he will cover you in, in a new way. And not just cover you from the outside, but also on the inside. Amen. Hey, so then nothing that can try to come against you shall not prosper. Amen. Even when they thought they could talk about you on your job or when they thought they can try to bamboozle you or even lie about you on something that you did not do. It's not going to be able to prevail or to prosper. Why? Because you were covered by the anointing. You were covered by the new veil. You had the fresh anointing that was around you. People always say, you know, what do I do if they, they are talking about me or, or in my job there's this racism or I don't know what to do. I always tell them, pray. You have to cover yourself with the anointing. Cover your mantle that's on your life because somehow God said he opened the door for you to have the job. And if he didn't tell you it's time to move, you got to what? Cover yourself. Jesus was spit on and spat on. His family didn't even believe that he was the son of God at first when he was going in the temple at 14 and 12 and telling the Pharisees what to do. Come on. Jesus went through the same thing that you and I are going through each and every day. He experienced it maybe even 10 times worse, but he did not give up. He didn't say, stop preaching. He didn't stop healing. He didn't stop teaching. Even the 12 disciples started to disbelieve him at, at certain times of the Bible. He still let them follow belong him and still was teaching them. Come on, beloved. You can't sit there and say that the God that you serve is not going to work it out. You can't sit there to say that he can't shift it around, but you have to go through the process. Everything is a process in this season, beloved. If you haven't noticed, we are in a pandemic. There is a process, amen? There's a reason that, that Moses needed to make the holy oil. You know, it, it, when you saw the tent, remember, he, he made the tent. So when you saw the tent and the things that were in it, if you were just to look at it with the naked eye, you would just see it look like what? They probably, children of Israel probably was talking about Moses. Look at this man. He was on that mountain, y'all, for 40 days, 40 nights. Now he over here built some tent. Look at this tent over here, and it got these little, uh, good morning, Orlando. It got these little tent in here, and these the altar, like, whoop de doo you know, what's so special about it? So to an ordinary eye or the naked eye, it would just look like a tent and some things. But in actuality, it was the place and the stuff that had to be holy. It was holy. Therefore, anyone who entered into the tent, once God consecrated the oil and had Moses anoint the tent, if you don't believe me, go back and read your text. Once he anointed it, excuse me, and it was consecrated. If anyone who would go into the tent and, and touch anything would become holy, anyone would go in. But some of you don't know what God has brought you through. Some of you are starting to forget, you know, what God did for you. Some of you have been judged or misunderstood or, 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 or talked about because of what folks have perceived about you. And, and through their naked eye, come on, beloved, they think that you are not a child of God. You know, they don't know who you are. They, they think you're just someone who comes to work and looks nice every day or, or maybe who gets on their nerves or and they have something wrong with you, but they forget or they might not understand that you are the chosen generation that you are actually an anointed child of God that you have been touched by the holy oil directly by God so wherefore you 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 can't have time to argue you don't have time to get in in their little spits and spats or debates you know just because people don't know that you're a child of God or can't see that you are a child of God does not mean that you are not set aside or you are not the chosen one that God has given you why because God is the only one that tells you that's that personal relationship between you and God so what people see on the outside might not be actually what's on the inside amen but how you treat them is how they're going to know with the love of Christ. When they talk about you or they come at you, you just say, oh, praise the Lord. Bless you. I got to go over here. Well, thank you for this. Amen. And keep it over here. Keeping that professionalism or, or keeping those healthy boundaries and knowing, hey, I don't have time for all that. I don't got time to, to prove who I am. I don't have time to tell you who I am or what I'm doing. Why? Because I have work to do in the kingdom for God. We are in a midst of a pandemic. I don't know how many times I can say it. Nobody got time for the foolishness or, or to sit there and, and play around with God in this season. You either need to be for God 
God or you're not. Amen. And there's no more time for the lukewarmness. It's not time to be in between. Like I serve God on Sundays only. And then Monday through Saturday, I'm go out here and do what I want to do. Mm -mm. Jesus says not in this season because I I'm requiring more of you. There's more of you that I need in this season. There's more that I have, have put inside of you. I'm trying to give you the fresh oil. I'm trying to give you a new veil. I'm trying to give you a new covering. I'm trying to give you the desires of your heart. You've been praying and fasting and saying, hey, I need this. Or you, you've been asking or desiring new things and then God saying I'm trying to give it to you but you're not in a stance or a place to receive because you're allowing the distractions you're allowing those who are not called and chosen this season to deter you or, or, or to put you somewhere else and God says that's not where I need for you in this season I tell people all the time that this season of the pandemic is a personal message for us as individuals. God is trying to say, I had to shut things down and, and put you in a place where I, you could hear only me. There would be no more excuses of you didn't understand if it was the pastor who told you or, or a lay leader or it wasn't my mother. God saying, no, 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 I'm putting you in your house. I'm putting you in a stance where you can only hear from me. But God says, I need you to actually saturate your, your, your house. I need you to get your place in order. I need you to put the oil. How can I not see today? Beloved, I, I just try to come to tell you this morning that, that you need to know where your oil is. You need to figure out where your oil. We all are anointed and appointed by God. We all have been created in a unique stance that we're all different. None of us are one and the same. But God is saying even in that, there's still a gift in you. There, there's still an anointing that, that I, I desire to have from you. There's still some work that you got to do in the vineyard. I know it has not been easy in this season. We have been losing folks left and right. I know that there's a virus out there. We don't know how it's getting around sometimes, and we don't know if it's going to come to knock on my door or my house, but God says, I still need you to survive. I still need some things from you. I want to put you in a stance to get ready to release some things in the atmosphere, but until you get into the holy of holies, until you saturate your atmosphere, God says, I, I, I can't come. I can't, I can't show up. Beloved, I wanted to challenge you on this morning to get back to your temple, get back to your tent, get into your tabernacle, get to a place where you can make the altar. How come I not see today? Get to a place where you have your oil and your incense and, and you are saturating the atmosphere of not just your house, but those that are in your house connected to that everyone's being anointed. Amen. And you are taking the time to reverence God. That is the significance of the oil. People always ask, you know, why do you pray, you know, to cover, cover them from, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet? I said, because the oil, there's something about the oil. When it blesses the crown from where your thoughts and your mind comes, where God gives you the wisdom, and it goes throughout your body to cover your feet, that means wherever you shall walk shall be holy ground. How can I not seek today? This is why you need the oil. So that way when things of the, of the world or things that who are not of God because they choose not to be of God are trying to attack you or come to you they cannot sustain that means they cannot actually do their job or it won't even even punish you or it won't even even phase you why because you're protected by the oil because you are anointed children of God I, I promise you I just wanted to remind us about the oil I, I wanted to tell you this morning that there's more to you than meets the eye there's more to you that folks have been telling you there's more to you you that folks that, that can't see beyond what God has put in you. You have been having the dreams and, and you have been seeing the visions and you've been getting revelation about God wanting you to do something or, or to embark in something and you keep thinking you can't do it. You keep saying, you know what, that ain't me. Or you keep saying, well, maybe not this year, God, or maybe when things get back to normal, and God's saying, no, 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 I'm trying to call you. I'm trying to draw you. You don't got to wait for something to get back to normal. You, you, you don't have to look for someone else to come into you. God's saying, no, I'm calling you by name. I need you to survive because I'm trying to give you the oil. I'm trying to give you the saturation in your house. I'm trying to pull some things up out of you that I need from you in this season. Beloved, I want you to stop ditching and diving what God is telling you and actually stand in a stance to receive what God has for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Father. I I'm so thankful for y'all 
tuning in with me this morning, amen. I promise, I pray that that message touched you like it blessed me, amen. We ain't done. We're going to finish the oil part two on Saturday, amen, because we're going to talk about how first you had to anoint the tent. Moses had to anoint the tent and the altar, but then he also had to go anoint his priest, which was his brother and his sons and himself, amen. So we are going to talk about on Saturday how the anointing has to also overflow onto you, amen. But first you have to saturate the atmosphere. You got to saturate where you are, amen. So at this time, good morning, <laughs> good morning, Aunt Ting Ting. At this time, if there's any prayer request or anything that, that God needs for you to, to have or you need prayer for, you may comment now up below because we're going to pray together and touch and agree. Amen. I know I got some friends and uh, some friends and family who are sick. Amen. And we're going to pray for their healing. We're praying for their restoration in this season. I know some people who are going through surgery. So we're praying for them to have a great outcome. We're praying that the doctors and the nurses and staff, they have great wisdom of care. Amen. I know some folks are, are celebrating some things on this weekend coming up. Some weddings are happening, and we have some people who have babies, so we're thankful for that, and we're still praying for them as well because that's a great thing and even in this season to still have love and, and to still make uh, covenants, amen. And we're even praying for those who have lost folks, amen, who might have to do funerals or Zoom funerals or whatever it might be. We're praying for the families and the peace with them as well because we know loss is not easy, amen. So if there's anything that you need God to pray for at this time or, or you want us to pray together, you may do so at the bottom. Amen. But I really pray, good morning, Barbara, that you were encouraged by this word about the oil. Amen. I, I need you to really catch that thing this morning. Go in, you know, if you want to get some spices, <laughs> if you like, get your little olive oil and mix some together. Or like I do, I get my olive oil and I pray over it and then I get my incense and I burn them and, and I start to, you know, uh, anoint my house and I start to anoint myself. Amen. And I start just to saturate the atmosphere, amen. You really get into that in this season. We have been in this for about six, seven months, y'all, and it doesn't look like we coming out anytime soon, amen. Tweet, tweet. So now, it, because we, we can't go back into the body of Christ to fellowship in a building, you got to saturate where you are so that way when you're doing, watching the streams and, and, and you're praising God and doing your devotions, your atmosphere is saturated, amen. Your house can be holy, regardless of what you think about yourself. Regardless if you say, it, maybe I'm not there yet, maybe you're saying, you know, I still got some things to get together. God says, no, come as you are. How come I not see today? Come as you are, child of God. He don't care if you have been broken. He does not care if you've been hurt. He does not mind if you're angry or upset. He does not mind if you have sinned. It does not matter. God says, come as you are heavy burden and lay all your cares onto him cast everything upon him so that way you can make it easy he said that he'll make your yoke easy that means that he will take on all your burdens amen so don't think it takes something that you got to get ready don't think you got to get time or or get into this place but God's saying just come as you are amen saturate your house as you are how can I not see today get your oil and get your children, get your partner, get your, get them around the table, whatever you got to do, and, and anoint and saturate the atmosphere. I'm telling you, those of you who have been seeking and desiring, you know, a shift. You, Some of you have been saying, God, I, I want to go deeper. Or some of you have said, you know, God, I need more of you this season. This is how you saturate and get that shift. This is how you get that new fresh anointing. This is how you get that new oil or that new veil. You got to really saturate what's going on in, in, in your house and saturate who's coming in your house, amen? Some folks might come in, you know, besides giving them the sanitizer or telling them to wash their hands, also pray, amen? Or say, here, get some oil and rub on your hands, amen? Because my house is anointed. Praise the Lord, and I need you to be anointed too, amen? So whatever you came in with won't leave here. Tweet, tweet, amen? Sometimes we gotta do that. That's what the old folks used to do, amen? Sometimes we gotta go back, amen? I see we have some prayer requests. Barbara says, pray for my great niece as she embarks on her treatment for her cancer that was attached to her body, amen. We're believing in healing for that. Rita says, pray for the church creativity to stay connected with members and community, amen, y'all, because I know it's hard, excuse me, for us faith leaders to do all the streaming, the YouTube and Instagram, and that's not easy, y'all. And then you gotta put it together, and then if you got the music ministry, they can they gotta stay six feet apart and, and they gotta do that. That's this is not easy, amen. But we gonna we gonna get through this, amen. So I thank you, Rita, for that prayer. That's awesome awesome. And my mother, <laughs> Mother Connie said, Bless you, Elder, for being a willing vessel of God. I'm focused and listening to God. Amen. 
Thank you. Bless you. I'm telling you, I don't do nothing whenever until God says move. Amen. It ain't nothing but the Holy Spirit. Amen. As well as I ain't doing nothing, y'all. That uh, I'm not telling y'all nothing that I'm not doing myself. Amen. I be anointing my house. I be I had my incense going before we even got on here. Amen. I be saturating my atmosphere. I promise you. I, I'm, I'm getting it together. Amen. Yes, Tanya, we're going to pray for my cousin Tanya for her son's surgery. Amen. We know it's coming up, so we're believing God. Amen. For a shift and a healing in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's get in, into prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We, we thank you for waking us up this morning again. We thank you for breathing breath in our lungs, Father. We thank you for the word to remind us about the oil. So I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, Father, for those who are, are watching and those who watch later on and even for the prayer request that you saturate everyone from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. I need the oil to flow from the inside out like never before. Give them healing and their bodies and their minds and their spirits, Father. We know well, what's going on on the inside. We know that some have to go under the knife or they have to be in the hospital. So I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you guide the doctors and the nurses and the staff. Give them humility and empathy of care, but also give them wisdom of care as they undergo the surgery. I'm praying for those who are even in recovery that are, have to go through treatments, Father. We know that cancer is not easy. We know some disease Jesus are more terminal than others, but we also know we serve a God that is able. We know we serve a God who is still a miracle worker. We know we serve a God who could also shift things around in the atmosphere. So we asking right now in the name of Jesus that you shift that thing around every cancer every body or, or ache or pain or, or every disease, whatever it might be, the lungs or the liver or, or whatever's going on on the inside that the doctors are trying to take care. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you open up the heavens and, and pour out a blessing of a miracle that they had never seen before. Let the healing emerge in their body from the inside out, Father. I'm asking for a shift in the atmosphere, Father. Have your way in their lives, Father. Touch not just the person who is afflicted with the disease, but also touch those who are connected to them, who are standing in the need of prayer. Give them restoration in their spirit, Father. Give them peace in their mind to know that they can still call on you. Let them know that the blood still works. I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you saturate not just them, but also saturate their homes, saturate their cars, saturate those that they are connected to, Father. Let the overflow come in. Let the healing be able to take place, Father. We all need healing on the inside and on the out, so we need you right now, like never before. I'm praying for those, Father, who are seeking to do ministry in this season, those who are faith leaders in churches who are doing the Instagrams and the, the YouTubes and the social media and are trying to stay afloat and trying to stay encouraged, I, I ask that you lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. Continue to give them creativity. Continue to give them the understanding of how to reach the multitude, Father. Continue to let the doors open to expand to the nation. Father, we know that we are all in this pandemic together, but we also know as a nation we shall stand together to you night. We know as a nation, we got to come together and have love of Christ on the inside, Father. We have to be able to stand together on your word to be able to cancel out the things that people do not care about, to cancel out systematic racism, to cancel out the judgment and the backbiting, to cancel out the recession and the economy. We know that only you can supply all our needs according to our riches and glory. So we ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you touch those who have been watching, those who are going to watch later on, whoever might hear under the sound of my voice, Father, you know the needs more than I know it themselves. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you, you cover them in the name of Jesus. Let their tent and their tabernacle be covered with the holy oil. Let them feel a fresh anointing. Let them feel a new God. Garment. Let them get a new veil. How come I'm not see today? Let them get the new assignment. Hey, come on, I'll see today. Let them be able to go forth and not just go forth, but go forth in you, Father. Give them the holy boldness to stand on your word. I know I have friends who are, are going into businesses and, and trying to do new things. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus as they're going in businesses of real estate or businesses of law firms or, or cannabis or whatever it might be. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, cover their business, Father. Cover their entrepreneurship should open up the loans, open up the doors for the space, open up the opportunities for those to receive the services. Father, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you cover them right now. Cover all of us, Father, under the anointing. Help us to feel your Holy Spirit like never before and have your way in our lives. How can I not see today? In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. How can I not see today? Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Yes, John. We we pray that I come out and agree for the Strickland family. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Aunt Lauren. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We're going to go ahead and pray. And I want you to continue to pray. Amen. Everyone who had prayer requests, those that were spoken and not spoken, make sure that you saturate your house on this week. Make sure you get your oil and continue to stay in prayer. Amen. Continue to stay in the faith of believing that God is going to shift things around. If you don't recall or, or you need to have a remembrance, go back in the text and remember all those that Jesus healed was not just healed because they asked for the healing or it was not just healed because God needed to, but it was because of their faith. Amen. That they believed on the inside for that he could do the healing. Amen. So, so faith and healing comes in a two part thing. Amen. You got to have the faith and also believe in the healing. Amen. It got to be two parts. So increase your faith on this season, increase your acknowledgement of God healing things. Know that God is going to shift things around for your good. I know it does not look good on the outside, but it does not mean that God is still not healing you on the inside. Amen. It does not mean he's not touching your family. It does not mean that whoever you're connected to, the overflow will not come. Amen. Sometimes it just takes one out of the ordinary for God to saturate and to appoint and to anoint for all those connected to them to be delivered. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Again, I thank you so much for tuning in with me this morning. I pray that this word touched you and blessed you. I'm Elder Paulette Davidson. Again, this is my ministry, Harvesting Ministry. I come to you every worthy Wednesday at 7 a.m. I'll be back with part two of this sermon on Saturday for Sanctified Saturdays at 8 a.m. Amen. Please comment below. Please share the video. I'll post it on my YouTube channels, Elder Paula Davidson, Instagram, Elder Paula Davidson, and my Facebook. Amen. Elder Paula Davidson. Please post. Please share. Amen. If you'd like to sow a seed, hallelujah. I thank those who have been sowing. If you'd like to sow a seed, my cash app is also on there. Amen. You can sow a seed. Amen. We got to sow into each other. Amen. And that's how we continue to sow into the Lord and sow into the word. Amen. I sow seeds as well. Amen. So if you would like to sow a seed, God bless you in advance. Thank you for those who have done it. My cash app is on there. I, I, I pray that, that God had really touched you on this morning and, and you go back and study. Amen. And you go back to read how much detail it is in the tabernacle and the altar. Love you too, auntie. I, 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 I pray that you understand that, that even as God took time to saturate and to prepare the tabernacle, he took time to actually birth you into this world. He took time to put you together to be the woman or the man of God that he has designed you to be in this season. So know that you are unique. Know that you are important. Know that you are loved. And God says he needs you to survive in this season. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Have a wonderful, worthy Wednesday and hump day. Amen. Uh, We're going to get through this, y'all. Amen. We still going to make it. And I'll be back with you guys on Saturday. Amen.